Welcome into the Cowboys Report. On today's video, we're taking a look at all of the Cowboys free agents this offseason and what the Cowboys could end up doing with them. And there are quite a few of them, volume-wise. Maybe not the best group of actual overall players out there. But we're going to begin with the most important one. I mean, that's quarterback Dak Prescott, who we will talk about about quite a bit until the Cowboys finally get a deal done, if they get a deal done, with their young franchise quarterback. The reality is for the Cowboys this offseason, outside of maybe a defensive coordinator, defensive coach's strategy, because that's just timely, figuring out Dak Prescott and what you pay him, if you're going to have him around long term or whatever, is job number one for the Cowboys organization this offseason. It's been way too long as it is. You saw how bad the Cowboys offense was without Dak Prescott at quarterback. Even when the offensive line was banged up, Dak still put up big time numbers. They got to figure this one out. It really shouldn't be that difficult. Yeah, it's going to be expensive. Just go with the market rate. It's fine. You saw what happens when you don't have your heart and soul of your team. So what does end up happening? With Dak Prescott, I think a tag or an outright payment is the really only options here for the Cowboys. So get your votes in. What do you do with Dak Prescott? Do you tag him or do you pay him? T for tag, P for pay. Let's talk Alden Smith now. I think is probably free agent number two for this team. The production, by the way, look, I like Alden a lot. I think he can be a nice number two, number three edge rusher option for you. And if your corners are better, and if you're not down in almost every game you play, you'll have more production from your pass rushers. He wasn't as good as the year went on. In his first five games, namely the Seahawks game and the Giants game, his numbers are awesome, man. 26 tackles, three tackles for loss, four sacks, his pressure rate, and almost off the charts, 17%. The last 11, though, 22 tackles, just the one sack, his pressure rate, cutting about half. Heck, he had as many tackles for loss. In the 11 games, either the first five, tackles were down. Everything was down in over twice the amount of snaps. That is very troubling. So for Alden Smith, there's going to be interest. And you might even see teams trying to offer him big-time money, a la Robert Quinn last year. So what do you do if you're the Cowboys? And, of course, there's a money amount that would make it obvious for both of these options. But in a bubble, what do you do? Type K for keep or type L for, you know what, I think I'm just going to let him leave. Let's focus in on the secondary now. Some key contributors. Chidabe Awuzie, who didn't play a ton this year, and I suspect is probably going to get a little bit more on the open market than many of you and the Cowboys are probably comfortable with. Jordan Lewis was up and down. I still want to see him play safety. The Cowboys never gave him that opportunity, though. And speaking of safeties, you've also got Xavier Woods here, who... I'm kind of out on because he really wasn't that great down the stretch. I could see the Cowboys keeping one of those big three in terms of the secondary. You got Donovan Wilson locked in as one starter next year. Trevon Diggs becomes either CB1 or CB2 full-time. Figure out which one you want to go with there truly in the end. Might bump up to CB1 in the near future. But Cheeto, Xavier Woods, Jordan Lewis... Cowboys are not going to keep all of those guys. There's really no way I think that's their plan. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's none. So let me know what you want the Cowboys to do. And you can vote for multiple here or none. Type in NO if you want. If you want to keep Cheetah Bay Awuzie, type in CA. You want to keep Jordan Lewis, type in JL. You want to keep and or Xavier Woods, type in XW. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here, scroll on down and get your votes in. Let's talk Sean Lee then, who I think there's a very real chance he ends up retiring. The defense was better with him out there, although he himself didn't actually play that great, but seemed like there were suddenly a lot less blown assignments and coverages. I don't think that's an accident right there, but they also got better overall as the season went on. The defense did because, well, there was nowhere to go but up. I wonder if this is the end of the road, though, for Sean Lee. Maybe a coaching spot makes sense for him in some capacity on this Cowboys roster. I also think it might be on the road for Tyrone Crawford, who was better before his double hip surgery and then came back and, to be quite blunt, was never really even close to the same guy. You saw a little bit better production, at least, later on in the season, but I just, 
I don't think he's a guy for you long term. And frankly, I think there's enough buzz around him retiring, as mentioned on Monday's video, that maybe he's just not back in any capacity in the NFL. All right, defensive lineman I do think is going to come back and should come back, frankly. Antoine Woods, when it comes to the run stoppers on the defensive line, there weren't very many good ones. Demarcus Lawrence, head and shoulders above everybody else. Antoine Woods, though, can and should be a rotational nose guard and run stopper for this organization. Now, it's easy to keep him. He's a restricted free agent. So the Cowboys can him with that probably second round tender, pay him a couple million, and have at least one of your three or four rotational spots locked up on the defensive line. All right, one player that I'm very curious to see how the Cowboys end up approaching this offseason, Elianku, who remember they traded for from the Houston Texans. And the Cowboys' defensive line is in a pretty awkward spot. I don't think he'd be expensive, and you might see a situation where you're going to bring back Tristan Hill, you're going to bring back Neville Gallimore, you're going to bring back Antoine Woods, you could bring back Hamilton and Elianku, and then I desperately hope add somebody else the defensive line because you need more options there. I think they're going to try to hope and pray and bank that Gallimore and Hill end up developing. That's more of a future discussion, though. Astral Yonku, eh, a couple decent run stops. He's nothing special. I think he borders on just being a guy, kind of like Justin Hamilton. If they're both cheap, sure, bring them back. You can even cut one of them before you get down to the 53-man roster limit. Now, we'll let you guys know what happens this offseason, the news, the rumors, the draft, the free agency targets, trades, all of it. Hit that big red button and subscribe today if you want to stay up to date on everything going on around America's team. And again, if you're watching on Facebook or somewhere else, new YouTube URL. It's slash Cowboys TV. A little bit easier to remember. you got to go type that into your browser to subscribe. Let's talk Andy Dalton, who I could see coming back to the Cowboys. I could. I think in the end, though, what you'll see happen is is that Andy Dalton will explore the free agent market and he'll try to find a team that gives him at least a chance of playing in terms of the as a starter. Because the only way Dalton plays for the Cowboys is if Dak Prescott gets hurt again. That's not exactly what the Cowboys or Dalton wants to have happen. So if there's no interest, I think he's back. Otherwise, probably not. Talk receivers now, another restricted free agent, meaning the Cowboys can tender him and then say, somebody come get him. And that probably won't happen with Cedric Wilson, who played well when Dak Prescott was out there and then didn't make much of an impact the rest of the year. Wild how that works out, right? He's not the only backup receiver, by the way, set to be a free agent. Noah Brown, who actually played a little bit more and had a little bit more production without Dak Prescott. He took over, I guess, the Wilson role a little bit in terms of targets. He's also a free agent. The Cowboys, historically, it's around 30% or so of their starters that they retain and around 35% of the backup rotation guys that they retain. So it's not great odds for Noah Brown to come back and maybe he tries to find a spot that can give him more playing time, tries to cash in like some other former Cowboys receivers have in the past. So what will Dallas do with Noah Brown? Get your votes in here. Make your prediction. Type Y for yes you think Dallas will end up retaining him, or type N for no. All right, a little bit quicker on this one here. Malik Turner, a restricted free agent who, you know, special teamer only. I think they'll tender him original round, see what ends up happening, and maybe end up cutting him come roster cutdown day. Look, your big three is set, unless you make a significant trade. <laughs> Michael Gallup. Uh, Cooper, Gallup, Lamb is an awesome one, two, three punch. Cedric Wilson, Noah Brown are free agents, as mentioned, along with Lee Turner. And then Futures contract signed earlier this week for John V. Johnson, Aaron Parker, and Chris Lacey, all going to compete for maybe that last receiver spot on the depth chart and 53-man roster. Now, there are some Cowboys face coverings on sale for you guys. 75% off these three packs here at chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. I will make sure that link, by the way, gets put in the comment section and in the description. 625 total for that three pack there. That is fantastic. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys mask. Let's talk Joe Looney now, who I am very curious to see how things go for Looney, where he played a lot for this Cowboys team, but I am of the mindset, I think the Cowboys are too, that Tyler Biotish is your long-term center. If you can get Joe Looney back 
on a cheap deal like he signed last year to be your swing center guard, I think that's a good move. If not, that's probably a spot you're going to have to look at in the NFL draft. Let's talk Cam Irving then, the offensive tackle who can also play guard and center if needed in a pinch. Offers that good versatility. Signed very late in the process. Didn't actually end up playing that much due in large part to injuries. And frankly, as we'll discuss in a little bit, probably got surpassed by some other offensive tackles. Finally, Greg Sinat, who was a late a practice squad and then promotion guy. He played three snaps in three games. He's an RFA too. And we'll see if he actually ends up coming back to this Dallas Cowboys team. The offensive line in general is in pretty good shape unless you start moving on from a, an offensive tackle in some capacity. You can survive with Brandon Knight and Terrence Steele. If those are your third and if those are your third and fourth offensive linemen, it's actually not that bad compared to the rest of the NFL. If they're playing key snaps for you, eh, it's a little bit more dicey than I think they probably want to get into a position of. But it is worth mentioning that eh, maybe the Cowboys do need a tackle this offseason. All right, linebackers now. Joe Thomas, who stuck around for a couple years again. You only keep about a third of these guys. Wonder if they end up moving on from him. I would be at least a little bit surprised if the Cowboys retained both Joe Thomas and Justin March. Although it is possible. Justin March is mostly a core special teamer. Maybe the Cowboys say, all right, which one of you guys wants to take the least amount of money? Cool, we're signing you to be that linebacker 4-5 role. You have of late, yeah, at least for now, Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith there as your starters. We mentioned Sean Lee earlier. I kind of want to see Luke Gifford and Francis Bernard, but if you're moving on from Jan, which is a possibility, if you're moving on from Joe Thomas, if you're moving on from Justin March, you do need more depth at that linebacker spot. And frankly, probably a new starter too. All right, backup tight end Blake Bell is next. Played a little bit more than expected because he was tight end three for this team, but became tight end two. Hey, Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz, they played pretty darn well. If Bell wants to re-sign cheap, as for all of these guys we're going to start mentioning, heck yeah, I like it. Otherwise, eh, what's the point? Now, we will talk about free agent targets as this season moves along. So who is your dream one? If you could get one free agent on this roster, who would it be? Let me know in the comment section, and yes, we will break that down in a future video here on the Cowboys Report. Special teams now, CJ Goodwin, he's one of your best gunners. I say bring him back. Now, I don't want to overpay for that role, but I also know special teams matters. I think there's a good chance Goodwin returns. And then finally, in terms of special teamers, LP the GOAT, the long snapper. As long as he wants to play, he's back. If he wants to retire, and the dude's going to be 40 soon, at some point he will, then you got to go find a new one. But until LP wants to hang it up and call it a career, you keep bringing him back for the vet men, a couple of a little over a million bucks, and you are set at the one position that you don't ever want to know how to say the guy's name because that means that bad things are happening at, the, at that moment. One final player I want to make mention of here, Ron Dell Carter, exclusive rights free agent, remember, undrafted free agent, then was waived by the or was on the Cowboys practice squad, signed by the Colts, then waived, then claimed. So technically is a free agent. But the way contract rights work, you have to have at least three years. Carter's not there yet. He's an exclusive rights free agent. It's very simple. The Cowboys offer Rondell Carter basically the minimum amount, which is like barely a half million bucks. And he says, okay, great, I'm going to play. Or no, I quit football altogether. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. He'll be back very cheap, and we'll see if he makes the Cowboys roster in 2021. 